We just don't have the space to store enough wood to see us through the whole of the winter. So I've got to continue to bring it in and process it through the winter to keep, keep the stocks up a bit. Now luckily I can source wood from the beach and from an engineering firm not far from where I work. We'll get a lot of equipment in on pallets. Now most of those pallets go back but the broken ones or the missized ones <coughs> they'll let me and a few other folk take away. So I'm going to get on with breaking these pallets down but I'm going to save some of the lats so I can make a pack frame. So next time I go up to camp one I'll hopefully have a pack frame that I made myself that is useful enough to carry up some gear with. So I'll get these pallets broke up, this wood sewn up and then we'll see about making a pack frame. Right, well this is just some of the produce from chopping up those pallets. Much of the rest of it has gone for firewood. Uh, but I'll save these bits for building material. I'll certainly get a few more bird boxes out of some of the wider stuff. But this lighter and cleaner wood I'm going to turn into pack frame. Now, I'm not sure yet what dimensions I'm going to use for this pack frame but it'll be a ladder style pack frame so I'm just going to need essentially five lats a bit thinner than this so I could saw these with a hand saw but I'll be sawing down the grain which is a little bit tedious so I might just run them through the um, circular saw so I'll get back to you when I've cut five decent sized strips out of this light poplar and then I'll start thinking about the actual dimensions of the uh, pack frame. I haven't 
really got any dimensions, but I think the best way to start is just to build one. Something that looks like, and if it's not right, alter it or rebuild it. We've got to start somewhere. So I'll start now by getting the table saw out and chopping these down. Right, I have got my dangerous table saw out. The observant will see there's, there's no guard on it. So I treat this with the same respect I treat with chainsaw, i.e. it wants to kill you. I'm going to cut these at one and a half inches. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Seems alright. I'll plug it in. I'll give it a quick test fire. Just make sure it's not going to throw anything out at me. Okay, there we go. Ears on. Make sure there's no nails in these. A push push stick there. Right, so I think we'll just bring this out just a touch. Right, I'll just check this for distance. So that's spot on one and a half inches. So we'll go for one and a half inches. One thing I've got to sort out for this pack frame, now I've got the wood, is the dimensions. And to be honest it'll just be a case of uh, make one as a prototype and uh, adjust as necessary because I've got no real idea. But uh, I've got a bit of a clue from the internet and so where I'm going to start off is the two uprights on your back, the two uprights. I'm going to start with armpit to finger length, end of the fingers. So about that length there. So 
Uh, if I measure that. We're talking 28 inches. 28 inches. For those that want to go metric, that's about 71 centimetres. So I'm going to need two uprights. So I'm just managing to chop off there the worst of the nail holes. Now I don't know whether you can hear it in the background but I've got a chainsaw and a wood chipper running just up the hill there. So you'll probably pick them up in the background and that's what it is. Now, that, so that's my two uprights. And then I'm going to need three cross members. And for that, I'm going to go armpit the wrist. So about that length there. And it's all rough guesstimates. Until we've made one and fitted it, we're not gonna really know. So that's gonna be 18 inches. Or to the metric among us, near enough 46 centimetres. So that's 18 inches, but actually I want it I want it the other way. I want it. I want it there. So I want that piece there, that's scrap. And we're gonna have three of those. Let's just cut that scrap edge off. Now I know, I know these saws are not at totally 90 degrees, especially after you've been using them for a bit. Now, if you took a close look at this chisel, you'd think I hadn't been looking after it very well. But in fact, I've recently found this chisel. So I'm just seeing if there's any use in some thrown out tools. And I think there probably is. The chisel might not work out too bad, but unfortunately I think the oil stone's got a dip in the middle of it. I don't know how you I don't know how you re re-flatten oil stones. It's sharp enough, if anything, I'm, I'm, it's digging too deep. But you can see that you can see by the, the way some of the wood's clinging to the end there because the end's not smooth yet, it's got it's still got little gouges in it where the corrosion is taken off the edge. Anyway, we've got to go with what we've got. So Put the chisel to one side for a minute.
Right then, so the basis of this uh, pack frame is the two uprights which we've cut to armpit to fingertip length in our case 28 inches and the three cross members which we've cut to armpit to <coughs> wrist length which in our case is more or less 18 inches so they're going to fit, fit on there something like that the distance apart I'm not really sure but if we just go with that So that will be the, up, the upper one and that will be the lower one. And then I want to make a sort of half lap joint. Or a log cabin joint. Just to seat these pieces of wood. To interlock them. And then I shall lash them or screw them or glue them or nail them or just bind them together somehow okay so we now want to mark where the notches will be cut out on these cross pieces So, now what we've got to do is cut in about an eighth of an inch, take out the wood, take out to a depth of an eighth of an inch. And the same with these, and they should to a degree slot together. We'll do that with the handsaw and the chisel that we've just chatted. <sighs> Best doing this without gloves on so you can uh, just guide the saw a little bit better. It's only uh, very light wood this, so I don't want to go in too far. It's not strong wood. And, uh, if I don't glue the joints, then we're going to lose a bit of strength. Right then, I should just, it's fairly straight grain, so I should just be able to pop a lot of this out.
once you get it started, then it's fairly easy, you can work the depth down to what you want. Right, that's the two uprights effectively done. Just got to do the three cross members now. So now I've got my five bits of wood which will fit together, not perfectly, but I uh, can't remember which was the top and which was the bottom now. The bottom was four inches, I know that. Four inches, that's the bottom. So that's the bottom. Right, there's going to be a little bit of adjustment needed, not much. That's going to want to open well, that just then, a touch more. There will be the pack frame, and all I've got to do now is tie them joints, tie them tight, or glue them, or screw them, or nail them. Bearing in mind, you don't want anything sticking through into your back. Uh, and then we'll have the basis of the pack frame and then we can see if it actually works. So now we've got this offered up, that's how we want it. The next stage is to break it apart again and put it back together, tie in these half lap joints or less than half lap joints or square notch joints. Uh, <coughs> together permanently so <coughs> I'll start with this one <coughs> and you can join it together by whatever means suits you for this one I'm going to tie it with jute twine it's not very strong jute twine well fairly strong it's probably going to cut my hands trying to snap it but uh, there we go, I can fairly easily snap it, so it's not that strong. If I had some, I would make some pitch pine glue, but I don't have any pitch pine glue. So, because I want this thing to last, and because I want to test it for comfort severely, I'm just going to, on this joint here, I'm going to simulate some pitch pine glue with a bit of epoxy. It's two pack epoxy from the pound right. shop. Let's try and get the... Uh, try and make sure I get this on the right way around. That's it. <coughs>
Right, so if this was um, pitch pine glue, I'd have to heat it up over the fire, put it on when it was hot, and then just let it cool. Right. <clears throat> Let's try that round. Uh, I believe this is a Canadian jam knot I'm starting off with. It's uh, just a slip knot. Slip knot with a knot in the end so it can't uh, come up off come out but as I've just demonstrated I can't pull too hard on this uh, string if I had tarred bank line I would use that but I don't have tarred bank line so I'm using jute twine and now I'm just gonna cross a couple of times that's once twice three times four times five times and now I'm going across to the other side and now I'll do the other diagonal I know you can't see here very well but I'm just crossing it diagonally I'm trying to keep a little bit of tension on it oh, that's twice three times four times and five times now the question is how am I gonna how am I gonna finish this off I'm just going to finish it off with a clove hitch around this bar here around the end, end tag Pull it as tight as I dare without snapping it and then just put a blob of glue over that end of that knot just to seal it. Right, I'll leave it, leave it straggly at the moment and I'll do the next one. <clears throat> so
So I'm gluing these together and then using Duke twine, which isn't the strongest. Number 38 bank line, tarred bank line, would be much more, uh, make a much better job. I could use paracord, but uh, that's a bit thick and a bit expensive for this, more a bit th thick than anything. But you could use cable ties, you could use wire, you could use screws, you could use nails, staples, anything you've got just to tie the sticks together. Right, so I've got two of the rungs on now. There's one rung to go and there's something I'd like to try for these this next rung. And that's making string out of another type of cordage which unfortunately uh, we very readily find in the outdoors. And I'll show you what that is. <clears throat> and that cordage is a plastic bottle. So if you start by just chopping the end off the plastic bottle and then just go around the plastic bottle, spiral around the plastic bottle It's not going to be easy doing this with a knife It is fairly easy with scissors you get a fairly consistent strip of polythene coming off. You can see the strip I've got coming off there. And I'm going to try and use this as cordage. I've just taken a piece of that polythene and tried to snap it and it's quarter inch width and it's very very thin I cannot snap it it's going to cut into my hands well before I snap it so if you can get it tight it will make a strong cordage Obviously you're going to have to modify the sorts of knots you use with it because it's a tape rather than a round cord. But the other thing I'm hoping is that uh, when I've lashed this final cross member on with that uh, polythene, I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to go over it with a flame or I might just use a heat gun and uh, it'll shrink down. So let's get this one on with this uh, cordage I've just made out of the bottle and we'll see if it's any good. Right so I'll start off with the timber hitch again so I'm just going to go I've wrapped it round, I've wrapped the standing end around the working end and then doubled it back one, two, three, four wraps around itself and tighten it up
and we're off. So straight diagonal. And now I'm going to go along this bit so I can start on the on the opposite diagonal. And now we're getting the opposite diagonal. Okay, so that's tied on but I may have to see what happens when I just run a candle over here see if it shrinks down and just to seal the ends off as well stop it from unraveling maybe it's drip some molten polythene on I don't know I could even do that over the jute a bit of molten polythene just to keep it keep it all in place so that's the frame finished, or finished so far anyway. So that's going to go on me back, something like that. Something like that. And what we need now are some straps to put it on my back with. Right, so that's the basic construction of the pack frame. It's a ladder style pack frame and all it consists of is five lats of wood, two uprights, three crossbars. Now I've notched these in and tied them and I've glued them because I want this thing to carry some weight and I want it to last. So that's the basic frame itself. As for carrying it, top of the frame, I've got a piece of cord here just to demonstrate with. And uh, I'd like something a little bit thicker than this just to spread the load on my shoulders. But this is about uh, three and a half metres long. I've just found the centre, doubled it in half to find the centre. Centre of the top rung. Lark's head knot. So that's fastened onto the pack frame and I've got two loose ends. So I load my pack frame up. Load my pack frame up on that side. Put this over my back. One bit of rope on each shoulder, there, bring the rope down, around that corner, down on this side, underneath the bottom upright and around that bottom room, pull it into my back a little bit. Tire, single, double overhand knot, nip it up, tie a board just like you tie your shoelaces, and there we go. If that was loaded up, I'd have some weight on my hips and a little weight on my shoulders. So that's the basic frame, and this weighs next to nothing as it is, but the proof is always in the pudding. So this is part one, and part two will be taking this loaded up to camp one, just to put some supplies down for a 24 hour overnighter 
bit later on, bearing in mind that it's end of January now. So I'm going to need a few supplies up there just to keep myself warm and build up the camp. I'll catch you sure. on the way up to camp one in a week or so.